made this full whip based on a design taping whip cracker Adam Winters had on the internet. It's got tapered mass in it. The idea being that a wave propagating down it due to conservation of momentum as the mass decreases the velocity must increase. So I made a video based on that. Um, it's called Conservation of Momentum and a Bullwhip. I hope you'll check it out. While doing that research, I came across an interesting article by Jefferson Taft at the math department at the University of Arizona, where he proposed that the propagation of waves in a uh, crackling whip was due to, uh, at least partially anyway, due to a falling chain effect. The idea being that a chain in this scenario here, certain amount of potential energy in it, you let it go, the conservation momentum as the change runs towards its end, the velocity must increase on the end. To be honest, I never heard of that effect. I decided to check this out for myself, so I made up this test apparatus, piece of aluminum tubing with about a 12 foot chain here looped around, and I got the ends of a little short chain, a half length chain, they're painted orange, full length, roughly 12 foot chain looped around. When we get ready, what we're going to do is we're going to turn them loose all at the same time and look at it in slow motion see which end hits the ground first. That's a 12 foot extension ladder. I left it in the field of view so you can see how high this is. It's a little over 12 feet. What I want you to do, we're going to do this at normal frame rate. See these orange ends of these chains? That's the one that's half length. This is a little short one. This is the full length when it comes down and loops back up. That's the orange in there. So when we trigger it, watch the relative speed, how long it takes for this one compared to that one and that one to hit the ground. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then we'll do it at high frame rate and slow it down. Can't see it move at the normal frame rate. That's why we're going to slow it down. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to watch these chain ends. See they're painted orange. That's the short one, the half length one, full length one. This end will move. So we'll start it. Slow motion playback. Okay. Now watch this end of this chain relative to these others. It coming down, they're about the same, roughly the same, roughly the same, but as it comes on down, it speeds up relative to these other two. Okay, we're going to repeat that, just make sure we got it. Remember, watch that chain right here, that one and that one. This is the long one. See it looped around? That's the half length one, that's the short one. Okay. Getting ready to pull it. Now watch when they first start. They're all about even. They're still even, still even. Starting to speed up, speed up. When it just finishes, it's quite a bit ahead of this other two. So I'd say there's no question there's a difference there. Well, I think you could see in that video that, yeah, it apparently is true. It does appear that the uh, the end of the chain moves faster than the simple falling chain. Yeah, I used two different lengths. It beat both up to the ground. So, I hope you like this. Uh, if you get a chance, check out my novel, The Brown Mountain Lights in the Mesozoic Phoenix on Amazon. Check out my website at uh, anisotropicplus.com. There's various links in there to some information you might find useful. Um, and uh, if you like this, please subscribe and uh, like us, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Based on my tapered mass experiment and the falling chain experiment, I think probably in a bullet you probably have at least both effects going on. I'm going to do a little more experimenting with this, and that will be the subject of a future video. Thank you.